bomb explodes outside the airport in Kabul, Afghanistan. Shrapnel rips through the crowd, killing 13 U.S. troops and scores of civilians. Almost 7,000 miles away, it's time to go to work. The NYPD's chief of intelligence knows that when something happens there, attention must be paid here. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, John, in, in view of the events of yesterday, let's get an overview of what happened. At police headquarters in New York City, a half mile from ground zero, NBC News was given exclusive access to the Intelligence Bureau's morning briefing. You can see the scene, crowded density with hundreds of thousands of people on approach to the airport, close contact with U.S. military persons. Uh, this has likely, over the last few days, become a target high environment. One thing to bear in mind for this is, you know, they again claim responsibility for the attack. How ISIS ultimately portrays its attacks is strategically significant in this case. And the focus turns to New York. All right, so we haven't seen the U.S.-focused propaganda piece yet. Although we haven't seen U.S.-directed propaganda, it's important to note that there have been some recent releases. This is the type of propaganda we're most concerned about here in New York. It's individuals that could be, you know, in the West, homegrown violent extremists that may be inspired by this type of content. Chief Thomas Galati's team isn't taking any chances. First, deploying heavily armed units citywide. We have 24-7 uh, coverage on <laughs> Military Island at the time. Um, also, we're hitting five or six other uh, military recruitment centers. Then debriefing his network of cops abroad, starting in Qatar in the Persian Gulf. So the Qatar government has been heavily involved in assisting the U.S. government with welcoming the refugees here at um, the air base. Since uh, yesterday's attack, the evacuation was disrupted slightly, but uh, my contacts on the base have informed me that the evacuation has resumed. And finally, the team across Europe. Yeah, Chief Carl, we have agents, detectives, and intel analysts deployed to Germany, Italy, and Spain screening evacuees out of Kabul. We also have classified threats from reporting for refugees. The NYPD requesting that our cameras be turned off as they delve into sensitive intel. We're in the room because we want to know, what is the NYPD doing differently since 9-11, and where do they say the threats are coming from now? The NYPD says this meeting never would have happened 15 years ago. Then they set up 15 overseas posts. The job, identify and go after the threat abroad before it arrives in New York City. You know, if something happens in the subway in Paris, we want to beef up our coverage in, you know, the subways here in New York. So essentially, the sun never sets on an NYPD detective? No. Uh, you know, especially uh, when we have somebody in uh, Singapore and they're 12 hours in front of us. So, yes, we uh, always, uh, you know, and, and they also have to respond to what we need. So, you know, if it's 10 o'clock in the morning here and it's 10 o'clock at night there, you know, they're very attentive to what's going on. Quarterbacking a team of detectives and analysts at a secret location in Lower Manhattan, Assistant Commissioner Rebecca Weiner says these types of initiatives are even more important, given a sharp increase in plots. The first trend, which is really important, is a real acceleration. So there's been 51 plots and attacks against the city in the last 20 years. Half of those, 25, have been in the last five years. Where the threats are coming from has changed, too. In the last five years, we've seen not just a transition from al-Qaeda to ISIS, which we saw in 2014 really sharply, but other actors like racially, ethnically motivated, violent extremists, white supremacists, neo-Nazi, what we call accelerationists, and then anti-government extremism. The NYPD's information sharing platform, dubbed Operation Century, has been heralded by police departments from Boston to Miami and from Chicago to Los Angeles. But some of the intelligence Bureau's initiatives have been heavily criticized as well. Allegations of spying on the city's Muslim community, speaking specifically about the demographics program, and I know you've testified in a deposition that uh, there were not leads and in investigations that led out of that, um, but I'm assuming a lot of ill will in that community. Were there mistakes that have been made as you've tried to sort through um, your best practices in this, in this bureau? I think in the early days of this bureau uh, starting, it was a division at the time, uh, there probably were some mistakes made. So sitting here today, you, you, you feel comfortable. Hey, whatever issues we've had, we've learned from them, and we're well within the, the guidelines, whether they be the handshoe guidelines or any sort of other law enforcement guidelines. We're on solid ground that we're doing the right thing. That's what you're saying today. Yes, on solid ground. And when we're working with the FBI, we work among, uh, under the uh, attorney general guidelines. So, and, and one other thing that I, I would add here, you know, we are a very diverse bureau. We have... Uh, uh, 
many, many Muslim officers from every country you can imagine that work here. Uh, and, you know, um, they are not going to let us spy in their community. So if they felt that we were doing something wrong, they would tell us. Chief Galati knew some of the officers who died at Ground Zero. What happened here on 9-11 serves as a constant reminder of the unthinkable threats that lurk around the next corner. Chief, you know, we stand here, obviously a horrific day. We've talked about the threats that the city continues to face. Those threats have spread out and where they're coming from and, and who they're uh, being brought by. What is it or what is the thing that keeps you up at night on the dawn of this anniversary? You know, I never feel easy, uh, even if I do think that we have a good handle on the threat stream. Uh, you know, uh, it's the unknown that really frightens me. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.